It's Monday, August 29th. From inside the WTOP newsroom, this is the DMV Download, brought to you by the men and women of Steamfitters Local 602. Get an estimate and learn more at steamfitters-602.org. The D.C. sports and crime worlds clashed this weekend when two teens tried to carjack Washington Commander's rookie running back, Brian Robinson, and shot the star player multiple times. Megan is learning more details about what happened from her law enforcement sources, and we talk about how prevalent this type of crime is in D.C. These things happen in seconds. Yeah. I mean, the groups that do these carjackings, it's like they move in without you really seeing them, mm. and they jump in the car and they go. Like right. We're talking like a 10-second crime. Draw a gun, get keys, take the car. And this obviously has the potential to be a huge hit for Washington's football team. We talked with WTOP Sports Director George Wallace about what this means for the commanders and their roster decision as the season is about to begin. He was drafted to be, uh, you know, eventually be the starting running back, and I think he was going to be that. Thanks for joining us. I'm Megan Cloherty. And I'm Luke Garrett. We're now piecing together what happened on 10th and 8th Streets Northeast yesterday evening when Brian Robinson was shot multiple times during this carjacking attempt. And Megan's been on the phone all morning and yesterday evening as well, getting the details from her sources throughout the law enforcement community. So we don't have the whole picture yet, Megan, but it's coming together. So let's start with the carjacking and shooting. Yeah. Where did it happen exactly? So Brian Robinson was at Crab Boss, which is like a really good seafood place that has a like all day brunch on Sunday. Just mm. FYI, if you're looking for something. 10th and H Streets Northeast. And he is out of his car when he's confronted by two teenagers. D.C. police say they were between 15 and 17 years old. Mm -hmm. The descriptions are really vague. So beyond that, we don't want to really say much more. It's not going to help us find him. Right. Chief Conti says Robinson fought back against one of the gunmen. Okay. And was shot by the second. His car was a Dodge Charger Hellcat which is kind of a, a cool looking charger. Muscle car. Muscle car. It was a white car with like a black stripe. So it was not like, you know, neon green, but it was a little showy. Right. And you, you, it stood out on the street. Okay. So he's shot. My law enforcement sources tell me that he was shot in the hip and he was shot in the leg. Um, that's new this morning. Got it. And just for the listeners to know, this is where Ben's Chili Bowl is, kind of the area. Yeah, there's a lot of restaurants down right. there. A I mean, lot it's, of a, it's a bars, hopping area. Exactly. Yeah. And, and there would have been a lot of people around, too. Mm -hmm. um, so it is sort of surprising because it was just so busy. And, right. it, and at 530, obviously, still light outside. Right, right. Um, so this happens and... Um, you know, the scuffle happens. I don't know if Robinson was with anyone else, okay. like in his car or was nearby with him. But somebody drops a gun. One of the teenagers drops a gun, according to this law enforcement source. After they, the scuffle. Or during or whatever. Okay. They find the gun later. And they're, the ATF, I understand, is now tracing that gun to see, obviously, if there's any fingerprints, mm. if it has a history of other crimes on it that they could possibly track down right. these suspects. And do we know if they took his muscle car? I mean, did they take it or was it left there? They didn't take it. Okay. Um, they fled uh, and they got back in their car and drove off. And mm. it turns out from Robert Conti, chief of D.C. police, we learned today that that car was stolen. So it had been stolen out of Prince George's County on Friday. Mm. And then Saturday or Sunday night, rather, they found it abandoned, that same car. And the teens have not been found. Right. And they're still... On the loose. Yeah. I mean, and, and honestly, the description isn't going to help us. So it's a matter of like, you've got to think that there's surveillance down there. They're going over right. witnesses. Right. But I mean, from everything we've heard about carjackings and how like prevalent this crime is, and we could go into the numbers next, but these things happen in seconds. Yeah. I mean, the groups that do these carjackings, it's like they move in without you really seeing them mm. and they jump in the car and they go. Like right. we're talking like a 10 second crime. Draw a gun, get keys, take the car. Yeah. So sometimes people who may have been just like right on the street may not have known it was going on until those shots were fired, obviously. Right. But they try and do it really, really fast. So it's just like you're caught off guard and the car's gone. I mean, and let's get into the numbers here. Uh, you've been pulling some you know, data from D.C.'s crime log. What are we seeing? What have we been seeing this past summer? So we know we've been talking about really since the pandemic began, how carjackings have just gone, I mean, just skyrocketed as yeah. a crime and not just in D.C., I will say. Yeah. Right. I mean, all over our area, but also all over the country. Um, year to date in D.C., there have been 326 carjackings, which is not nothing. No. Obviously, there's an interest in Brian Robinson, right? Because he's this all-star running back. Yeah. He, he was a, the hope for the team. Massive potential. A, right. A lot of people are interested in this guy. Yeah. But, I mean, if this has happened to your mom or your neighbor or your coworker, yeah. it's just as big of a deal. 
So I don't think we should minimize how many people this has happened to. And this is just in D.C., right? I mean, we're not talking about Maryland and Virginia. Carjackings involving guns in D.C., 73 percent of those 326. So most are really dangerous. Yeah, Weapons involved are guns, involved. Yeah. right. And 87 of those 326 have been closed, meaning, you know, they found the person who was responsible and there was some kind of um, mm. end to it. Now, Chief Conti spoke today and he called this incident a reckless use of a firearm. When you talk about people using firearms in communities, that make people feel unsafe. And we want to be there to support community members, but also lock up bad guys and hold them accountable for the action. WTOP's John Doman was down there. And we also spoke with Charles Allen, who's council member and chair of the Public Safety Committee. And he was saying, you know, he kind of brought up that idea that this is a problem regardless of who you are. Right. I mean, this is a safety issue. You know, there's a lot of victims of crimes that aren't going to get this level of attention as well. And so that's, you know, our priority is just as much for him as it is for anybody else. And Megan, you know, you and me sat down with D.C. Police Chief Conti on June 6th, right at the beginning of the summer. And we brought this issue of carjacking. And he really said it's what keeps him up at night. I, I just get the sense, and this is just me, people are at a different place right now. Uh, tension is is just is high and... And people, the tolerance that people have, you know, for one for one another. I mean, it, you know, anything. I mean, just it, it, mm. it throws people just off the rails and at a level right now that I have not I have not seen in a very long time. And it seems as if this carjacking prevalence and problem is still ongoing. You yeah. know, when we look towards the realm of solutions, what's out there? I mean, I don't think anybody knows. I, I know the mayor today praised Conti um, and so did Charles Allen for really like connecting with, they say, regional partnerships. That just means knowing what's going on in Fairfax, what's going on in yeah. Loudoun, what's going on in Montgomery County and seeing, OK, these are cars. Clearly, they cross state lines. They yeah. cross jurisdictions. Can we band together here and kind of start tracking these criminals together? Mm. Um, and I think that has happened. They have this regional task force that's all about carjacking. I know. I mean, we spoke with Fairfax County Chief Kevin Davis. He said it was something that was really on the top of his priority list because it's, I mean, talk about feeling unsafe, you know, at the grocery store or near your house, wherever these things happen, um, especially if somebody's pointing a gun at you. Yeah. So as we know, I mean, these things can can really become dangerous. I mean, with, with Robinson getting shot and we hope obviously he makes a quick recovery, but yeah, the numbers don't tell a, a really happy story here. And mm. it's kind of we're hearing from law enforcement across the board. I mean, obviously, it's a gun problem. Yep. Obviously, it's a <laughs> I mean, they're getting away with it. If yeah. you've only solved whatever, 87 of 326. Mm. Um, so it could be the same kind of groups of people who are out there. Right. That, that's been discussed as well. But as far as an answer, I don't think there is one right now. Yeah. And, you know. It reminds me, kicking it back again to our conversation with Chief Conti, he talked about how to best treat these criminals who are teens. You know, mm-hmm. how do you do that? How, how harshly do you punish them? Where do you, do you put them back in the community? You know, and, and he brought up an interesting point where he said, I'm actually scared for these teens themselves because they end up getting killed and hurt a lot of the times, too, when they draw a gun on someone. It creates an awful situation for literally everyone involved. Absolutely. Well, we'll be keeping an eye on, you know, Robinson and his recovery and also how leaders around our region really respond to this ballooning problem of carjacking. And after the break, we're going to talk to WTOP's George Wallace about what this could mean for Robinson's career and what it means for the commander's upcoming season. Backed by the experience of its hardworking members, Steamfitters Local 602 is ready to take on your next commercial heating, cooling, HVAC or refrigeration project. Steamfitters Local 602 adds value to our community through its partnerships with local contractors and building owners, all while keeping the focus on improving the lives of its members and their families throughout the DMV. For work that's on time and on budget, go to steamfitters-602.org to schedule your next project. That's steamfitters-602.org. Steamfitters Local 602, changing lives. Thanks for listening to the DMV Download. If you like this show, give us five stars and leave us a review on Apple Podcast. We love hearing from you guys, and your reviews really do help other listeners find this, our area's only in-depth daily local news podcast. And thank you for making us a part of your day. 
So clearly, this is going to impact the Commanders. During the NFL preseason, Brian Robinson emerged as a powerful running back. The third round pick from Alabama showed great potential for this upcoming season. But after the carjacking and shooting, this all changed and was thrown into uncertainty. Yeah, and we don't know, obviously, the severity of Robinson's injuries or what it means, you know, how much he's going to miss, if anything. We turn now to WTP Sports Director George Wallace to learn more about Robinson as a player and, of course, what this might mean to the team. George, thanks for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. (laughs) Um, What is the team saying so far? I know this just happened yesterday, but what have we heard out of the uh, commanders? Well, they had practice this morning, and then uh, Ron Rivera said he has spoken with uh, Brian Robinson, visited him last night, uh, said that they don't know how long he will be out, but he is in good spirits, um, and that... uh, you know, obviously it could have been a lot worse. They are very fortunate about that, that it was not worse than that. But um, they don't know how long he's going to be out, where they're going to have to rehab mm-hmm. or anything like that. But he has spoken to him a couple of times. He seems to be, for for, for what happened, he seems to be doing okay. And then Brian Robinson actually uh, tweeted this morning or put on his Instagram story that surgery went well and that he's already out of surgery. So we'll know more, I think, after That's good. as we get later in today and tomorrow. Mm. And moving to Robinson, you know, as a player, what did he really show the commanders this preseason, and how does this affect the commanders of the football team? Yeah, I mean, he was uh, he was drafted to be, uh, you know, eventually be the starting running back, and I think he was going to be that. I think he had shown enough this preseason. Antonio Gibson was kind of penciled in as the starter, but he mm. fumbled in the first game, and then Brian Robinson was taking first-team reps since then. So I think mm. he was... He didn't play the other night against Baltimore. He rested all the starters, so that was a good sign there. Um, so I think he was set to be the starting running back. And now, if it's, you know, they could go a number of ways with it. If you put him on the non-football injury list, uh, it's four weeks, and technically you don't take up a roster spot. Okay. So, you like know. A calculated sort of move right Yeah, now so if he has to team. miss four weeks. I mean, look, Antonio Gibson's been there, done that. I think they were expecting him to start the season as the starter. Mm. But the way Robinson performed in camp, I think he kind of, you know, look, the guy's from Alabama. He comes from a winning program. He knows what it takes to win. It's kind of a big deal. I mean, like, kind Al- of a big deal. <laughs> kind of a big deal, as Ron Burgundy would say. Alabama last season, he had 14 touchdowns, a um, thousand three forty three yards, six one two twenty eight guys. I've looked up all yeah. the stats. Impressive. But I mean, he's a beast. It's just kind of a you know to get shot in the hip and the leg, and you're a running back. Yeah. E- yeah. You, when you hear good. that, it's not you not- know right. I mean, best case scenario, George, he misses four games, probably. Probably, yeah. But again, we have no—I mean, I have no idea. But right. yes, because here's the other thing: the I mean, roster he had surgery. I mean, he's gonna—it's not like it's like a yeah, raise. He's not, he's not playing right. in two right, weeks. Right, right, right. He's not playing in two weeks. He's got a—you uh, know—they have to have the roster down to fifty-three by tomorrow. Mm. So, to your point, Megan, calculated the way they're going to do the roster. You know, you're not going to take up a roster spot. You know, if he's out four weeks, and then when he comes back, then you'd have to cut somebody else. So, a lot of moving parts, mm-hmm. and that's the other thing with. You know, as Ron Rivera told us this morning that, you know, at, so after the preseason, the end of the last preseason game, next couple of days, coaches meet, they meet separately, you know, and you, you kind of put your roster together and they meet together and they kind of go through cuts. So this is kind of putting them behind the eight ball, so to say, also mm. because they have all these meetings set up and then they go to the hospital last night. They got, the, you know, right. So, you know, they have to have this done by tomorrow. And a lot like, you know, there aren't many spots up for grabs on this team. I think a lot of it was set. A lot of a few positions with some depth issues that they were probably guys on the bubble that that you know whether a couple guys played the way onto the team the other night against Baltimore we don't know right so they're kind of a little bit behind now right with that so uh, it's gonna be interesting next twenty four hours or so yeah. yeah do you see them pulling in another running back they could uh, they could keep um, somebody else on this roster for a few weeks until he's back or you know I saw a stat that eight hundred and sixty some players are gonna get cut so coaches. Mm. You know, whatever the roster Yikes. is tomorrow, yeah, whatever the roster is tomorrow at four is not what it's going to be on opening day. So a lot of, you know, coaches will keep somebody, then they'll go pluck somebody else off a of waiver wire that was released by another team. Right. So, you know, just maybe they got caught up in a number situation on another team. You know, mm-hmm. he's good enough to play, mm-hmm. but they number have to situation. They somebody who's good right. from the Falcons and or whatever, seen and we that, can pull them in. We've seen that a lot of times. So, right. Um, huh. More so changes that, to come. That could, yeah, 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 yeah. So that could be, you know. Uh, something to watch too. And when you look forward to this regular season, you know, you've been at camps watching the team. What are your expectations for the Commanders? Expectations. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of expectations. This Good team, or bad? This team all the years. <laughs> uh, you know, look, it's 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 year three, and Ron Rivera has said since the end of last year, year three is the year you have to 
take the big next step. Year three under Ron Rivera. Under Ron Rivera, sorry, yes. And you have a quarterback now, a guy that Ron Rivera has said is his guy. Mm. Whether he believes it deep down or not. <laughs> he said it. Seriously, yeah. I, I'm not so sure he believes that. But he's gone all out and put everything on Carson Wentz. So we know what Carson Wentz is. I mean, he's a decent quarterback, 60% completion, did throw 27 TDs and only seven picks, I think it was, last year. So he has the ability. It's just that there's no secret the biggest key to this year is going to be him, whether he stays healthy. And, again, that's just the way it is in, the, in all of sports. So if you stay healthy, it's a big part of it. But they do have weapons on this team if Wentz is able to stay healthy. And it's a night and day difference between he and Taylor Heineke. Mm. Um, the defense can't be any worse than it was last year. Mm. I think they'll have to be better. How's um, the O-line is my question. That's the tough part, too. You're gonna, uh, they have lots of injuries along the offensive line. And then lots of depth issues, we too. need to protect our guy. Because you lost Brandon Sheriff also. So, the um, do they have the ability to win 9, 10 games? Yeah. I do. The way the, ske- oh, the, way the schedule Georgie. sets up. Double digits. He's yeah, at 10. I do. I do. I do. Schedule sets up nicely. They've got some weapons. You're playing technically a last place schedule. But again, that changes year to year in the NFL, too. Mm-hmm. They have Jacksonville, Detroit, weeks one and two, the two worst teams last year. They, they're they getting better. They have, Jacksonville has a new coach. So, But my point is, if you are who you expect you to self to be in year three, mm-hmm. you can, I don't care how good Jacksonville is, how much they've improved. You can't lose that game. You well, can't lose to Detroit. Up, right. You're set up to win. I mean, you, the, must if you wins. don't win those two. <laughs> yes. You don't have many must wins in weeks one and two. It's a must win. Huh. Okay. All Write right. it down. We're here for Take it. Take a picture. Record it. I've written it, it down, George. Write it down. <laughs> George Wallace. But don't with, hold me to it. With all of the optimism. <laughs> thank you for being here. Thank you. And before we go, <laughs> just kidding. I'm not, I'm not sick, but. <laughs> I want to talk about this new study that came out of the American Journal of Preventative Medicine that makes kind of an interesting claim. It says that if you take your sick days, you're actually going to live longer, or you're more likely to live longer, that is. What? Why? Oh, just because of like the stress of working when you're sick? Yeah, I guess so. And I think the study really doesn't totally answer the why. It just says it's like there's definitely an association between you know men and women who take their sick days off live longer. Okay, I just pulled up this article um, from The Hill that is breaking down this uh, this new research. And listen to this. Specifically, mandatory paid sick leave was associated with lower rates of suicide, homicide among men, and lower homicide and alcohol-related mortality among women. That's pretty morbid. Yeah. but I, That's pretty dark. It is dark, but I guess it makes sense. You know, like, if you're sick... You got to take care of yourself. And I think that's what I'm getting from it personally. It is also speaking to mental health, too. I mean, I think like if you're just overwhelmed and it's too much, obviously, I think that that's when people push through. Right. I mean, at least, I don't know. It just seems like, oh, I'm not really sick, sick. Like, I'm not going to make anyone else sick. But yeah, you need that time. You need a break. Totally. That's so interesting. Yeah. And, And the article also says that the United States is one of the only developed countries without a national paid sick leave policy. I mean, you know, here at WTOP, we are greatly, you know, we are lucky that we have paid sick leave, which is really nice. But not everyone in this country does, which right. yeah, this study usually, maybe, I don't know. I mean, what does that say? Right. It could mean that you just don't get paid that day or whatever it is, yeah. which obviously then you it changes your mind as to how you uh, want totally. to take, yeah. take your sick days. That's interesting. Well, take your days. If you're sick, take it off. Get mm. some rest. <laughs> That's good, good advice for a Monday when we're all like, ugh. I know. <laughs> And that'll do it for us today on the DMV Download. We are sponsored by Steamfitters Local 602. Our managing editor is Craig Schwab, and our music is by Real World. Give us a review and rate our show if you get the chance. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. You can also find us on social media where we're posting content every day. And you can find out more about this podcast and become one of our VIP listeners at dmvdownload.com. The DMV Download is a product of WTOP News. Listen on 103.5 FM in the D.C. area, 107.7 FM in Virginia, 103.9 FM in Frederick, online at WTOP.com and on the WTOP News app. Have a good night, guys.